Welcome to the SOB Radio Show, where we have fun, interesting guests, and hot topics. Each week, we offer insights into music, fashion, health, fitness, and humor. Do you have the perfect guest for us to interview? I want to know. Drop me a line on our Facebook page at Spunky Old Broad 1, or reach out to me on our website at SpunkyOldBroad.com. And now, back to the show. I'm back with Susie Levan, who I've um, told you before is a, a multifaceted woman and the author of a wonderful book, Getting to Forgiveness. And uh, now, Susie, I want to come back and talk to you about, um, you know, how, how you actually got to forgive and, and uh, how you are, what, what, did, what did it take? I, I learned forgiveness, believe it or not just a year or two ago, not, not that long ago. It was very difficult for me to forgive people who had done me wrong. And, uh, but I, I found that, and I, that was mostly through my son, who is very spiritual and said, you know, this is, this is how you have to live your life. So what, what helped you get through this and come to where you are now? Well, you know, you're not unlike most people in that they really don't know how to release the the anger, the hurt, the the pain, the trauma, whatever it is that we feel that's been done to us. And it's a very, I think, um, common feeling. And it's not about forgetting. And it's not about condoning. But it's about realizing with a new perspective if you can possibly look at it with new eyes and realize that everything that has been done to you, no matter how bad it was, trauma, trauma or otherwise, or being a victim of a crime like I was, actually made me a better person, changed my life forever, even though I had to go through a lot of pain and trials and tribulations in order to come, you know, come out um, into the light, if you will. So forgiveness is for you. It, it's not for anybody else. Because in the end, there is nothing to forgive. If you look at it from a whole, you know, metaphysical point of view, which is what I speak about today, obviously. But if you think about the possibility that each and everything that happens in your life, you have asked for to be shown to you. And now for you to react and act and do now whatever you need to do from that place. Then in reality, they've done their job. And what now you have to figure out. What are you going to do with that information or that, that knowledge, that process, the pain, and change it? Because if not, we live very long lives now. We're in 70s, 80s, you know, 100. And living in that pain, you know, for all those years is the worst thing you could possibly do. So letting go of it is really, and releasing that pain is the, the only thing that you can do in order to heal and to move on. Because you're only hurting yourself. So had I not really understood that and seen these three gunmen who have perpetrated us, hurt us in mentally, physically, emotionally, in so many different ways, and thank God my daughter was not traumatized because I held all of that for her. And I don't think I would have survived had she had not been with me in that trunk because she was the reason that I stayed alive. alive. I then was able to look at them and say, you know, had it not been for you, there's nothing to forgive. Had it not been for you, I would have not gone over to the other side. I would have not been afraid. I'm not afraid to die. I would have never enjoyed the beauty of the love and the warmth and the energy of these spiritual beings that I was surrounded by. And yes, I had to upend my entire life where my home, my my career Everything that I knew to be what I thought my life was going to look like changed in an instant. I wouldn't change it for anything. So in the end, who who do I need to forgive other than myself for how I felt about them? Do you see the difference? Oh, for sure. And I guess that's the message you want the readers to take away. A hundred percent. So let's go now to, to uh, how, how did you and Alan meet? So we worked together, actually. I, I came to work for him in 1972. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. And just grew up in the business. And and before you know it, after many, many years, 
you know, became the exec, the vice president, then the executive vice president, and then chief operating officer. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's amazing! Just amazing. Yeah, and that well, wasn't an. I know that wasn't an accident either. You know, I know I was directed to be there. It's just, it's just, I, you know, what I know today about the universe, the other side, the messages, the guidance, et cetera, is that it's uh, so totally different than what I knew in 1988. And so both of you had been married before. And so for yes. the women who are listening, who have gone through a very acrimonious uh, divorce or uh, have lost a spouse or whatever, and think, oh, there's nobody, or they're desperately looking for someone, what, what advice do you have for them? Do you have any? You know, I wish the word desperate wasn't in that conversation, because I think that if you're desperate, you're not going to find anyone. I think you just have to and- l- let it be. And I always say, if it's meant to be, so shall it be. Yeah, that's my son always says to me, Mom, the universe will provide, and you're exactly where you need to be at this time. Exactly. So it's, it's, and, you, yeah. and you just really yeah. have to trust your gut, trust your instincts, trust your knowing, and, and be where you need to be. And sometimes you're surrounded by these people, and you don't realize that that's the person that's supposed to be your soulmate. You know, because you might think of them as a friend or a business partner or whatever. You know, never in my wildest dreams did I think when I joined Alan's company that he and I would be married. It wasn't, I had just had been recently divorced. So it wasn't something that I even thought about. Never came into my, you know, you know what I'm saying? It yes. wasn't, yeah. And I was young. I was 22 years old. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. Yeah. So. Tell us about, you know, we know your title is Getting to Forgiveness, and I can certainly understand why you wrote that title, but you also have a subtitle. Right. The subtitle is What a Near-Death Experience Can Teach Us About Loss, Resilience, and Love. And how has that impacted those people that you have, you've done these um, uh, book signings and and uh, appearances, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to one of yours uh, next week, but right. um, how has that really impacted the people that have come to hear you speak on it? Well, the reason I have the subtitle is because loss is very much a part of forgiveness. Um, I lost, as I said earlier, my career, my home, myself. I was no longer the same human being that came back into her physical body. And so through perseverance and resilience and learning how to cope and how to heal is where resilience comes in. And we all have that power. And everything that I have done, um, I hope, is obvious to everyone that we all are. We all have superpowers. We all do. And we just have to connect with them because we all go through Trauma in some way or another, be it divorce, be it a death of a spouse, be it a, a, uh, an illness, it goes on and on. And so you have to look at that. Those are all losses. But then you have to bounce back and say to yourself, okay, so now what? And move on and be able to grow from that and realize that in the end, all there is is love. That's what you take with you. And my daughter, who was seven years old at the time, passed away last year. September 17th, 2019, sorry, 2018. And um, so if I hadn't gone through enough trauma already, I was now faced with her two-year illness and then passing of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so I now had to deal with grief on a totally different level. So Gail, you know, you think you are Everything is tra-la-la and everything is great when you realize, you know, we're constantly being tested as to now where do you go with this and how do you heal. And so it's taken me a good, and it's taken me and it continues to be, um, because grief of a child is something you never really get over. Um, It's taken me a while to really even speak about it, but I know that I did not plan on putting a pro, uh, an epilogue in my book. And because of her passing and her telling me, Mom, you need to finish my book, your book, I, um, I wrote an epilogue in honor of Lauren, 
who was now 36 years old and was supposed to be married this year in January 19, 2019. <coughs> so, you know, it's been it's been a very a very difficult time for us. I can appreciate that because I did lose a son myself, and that was many years ago. It was uh, let's see, he was 45, and he would be now 61. So it was what 16 years ago. But you know, all of this comes, you know, and this is the interesting thing. There are people who are listening to this, who are saying, "But I've been such a good person. I've done so much for other people. Why am I going through this?" And I think people go through things because they're able to go through things and the way they live their life shows other people who they are. Well, I don't think we can wish it ever ask why everything I truly believe happens for a reason. I truly believe that we choose our soul contract before we come back into our physical body. I obviously believe in reincarnation based on what I've seen and the messages that were shared with me on the other side. And so with that knowledge, I feel that every one of the things that are put into our, into our life, given to us or shown to us, no matter what it is, it just is because it's neither positive or negative until you put a charge on it. So if you say it's That's negative, true. so shall it be. And so instead of saying this is good, this is bad, it just is. And now how do you get past it? How do you heal from it? And, of course, grief of... The death of a child is something that is so out of sequence that it's the hardest thing in the world. Your parents, your friends, you know, other people, but your your own children is a totally different experience. And so, um, but you're able to do something I have never been able to do, Susie, and that's meditate. I know that people say it's important. I know that you believe it's important. And when I try to sit down and meditate the way they say to meditate, which is in a quiet space and nothing going on around you, and just just sit there and you don't have to think, just clear your mind and just whatever, I have a really tough time doing that. So and I don't you're not and you're not different than most people, Gail. I'll be honest with you, I get that all the time. And had it not been that that was the message I was given. Um, for me to learn how to meditate and then to share it with others. <clears throat> but meditation is really about quieting your mind, but not necessarily having to be quiet. It's about just breathing, being present, and deeply breathing, and allowing that breath, to f you follow that breath. And so it's really not as complicated as a lot of people like to make it. Um, you know, there's a lot of apps that you can meditate with, you know, sounds of the ocean or sounds of birds in the background or whatever you want to connect with that really allows you to just be present. And by the way, it only takes five minutes. It doesn't take half an hour. It, it's all it would take is five minutes to just breathe into being present. And it's very powerful and it really changes your brain. It changes how you feel when you wake up in the morning. It changes your ability to concentrate. Um, to um, feel more relaxed, um, make better decisions, have more clarity, sleep better. And just the list of all of the things that meditation does is, is scientifically proven. Well, I have, tr I have practiced the deep breathing and the breathing in and the breathing out. And I, I have tried that recently more than ever. And uh, I'm not sure I'm still in the zone you're supposed to be in, but I have tried that. And there I is no wrong or right, by the way. See, you're judging it. There is no wrong or right. Yeah, that's probably true. That is you're, probably it's like, true. It's like prayer. There's no wrong or right. You pray, you pray, right? Right. So exactly. everybody, so, right. you know, we have a long enough to-do list. What I say to my students is stop judging what you think it should feel like or be like. Or if somebody else's experience is different than yours. That's how it's supposed to be. Because in the end, meditation is about also receiving and opening up to messages that will come through. Because you are actually changing your, your frequency, your vibration in that. Wow. Yeah. So where, where can people buy your book? Where can they get the book? Okay, the book is available at Amazon. 
and uh, Barnes and Noble and any other thousands of other bookstores that people can purchase it at. And I want to tell people again, we're not certainly through with the interview, but I want to get this in in case where people, you know, are moving in different spots. Mm -hmm. The book is called Getting to Forgiveness. And the author is Susie Levan, L-E-V-A-N. And, um, you know, it's, it's, if you met this woman, you would have a, a completely uh, different feeling of someone who has gone through something like this. When she walks into a room, it lights up. And she has this ability to make everybody feel welcome and everybody feel wanted. And what you also didn't say in, in the uh, introduction, or I didn't say it, was you also were a home builder. You did that as well. And uh, <laughs> so there's probably a hundred other things that you've done that I didn't mention and that, you know, I don't even know about. So well, my husband calls uh, me a rena- my husband calls me a Renaissance woman, but you know, that comes from my dad. My dad was a early flipper long before, you know, all these shows on HGTV. When uh, I was growing up in the fifties, he would buy, he was a, he was a plasterer. And he would actually buy and, and, and uh, knock down the kitchen and the bathrooms. And I was his little handyman, his, his helper. I, I, he would call me his assistant project manager. And I just absorbed all what he was doing. And after I closed Balance Magazine and the Work-Life Balance Institute, I took a couple of years off. And I'm also an obsessed knitter, by the way, which was not anywhere in there. And um, I also didn't mention that. This year, had I not purchased a beautiful puppy, he's a blue Merle mini, mini poodle. He has become my emotional support dog. And without him, I don't think I could have healed the way I have so quickly because he brings me such joy and such laughter. And he is just so delicious. And I tell you, he's been honestly saved my heart, if if that can make any sense. Well, no, I... I, I know exactly what you're saying because when I was in, uh, uh, you know, I was I was in the hospital for five days and I was homebound for 15 with a reaction to chemo. And um, when I was in bed, my two cats were like right on top of me. One was in my lap, one was by my side, mm-hmm. and just having them there and petting them and mm-hmm. them purring and looking at me with the loving eyes. Right. Uh, you know, people say cats don't have any emotion. Yes, they do. Of course and, they do. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you, that was one of the greatest healers I could have ever had was oh, having yeah. those two. Oh, yeah. Because if they hadn't been there and I was homebound for for 15 days in bed almost all mm. the time, mm. uh, it was horrible. But it was yeah. wonderful with them because I just kept petting them. So, you I know, to me, anim- what- animals are the number one healing tool that I always recommend. And a lot of people just don't understand it. And I hadn't had a pet in 20 plus years because of our travel schedules and so many different reasons. And first thing I knew in my heart of hearts, I woke up one day and I said to Alan, I need to get a dog. And this was like a month and a half after Lauren passed. I said, I need to get a dog. And he looked at me and he said, you know, when you're grieving, they say you shouldn't get to do anything that you're going to be sorry for. I said, I'm never going to be sorry for this little puppy. And I immediately went out and got this dog, and he has really changed my life and, and um, like I say, saved my grieving in, in a totally different way where I know Lauren sent him to me because she loved animals. She had two Australian shepherds, and uh, they are now with her fiancé, so I understand the importance of a pet and an animal. So Amazing. anyway, so, so after I closed the... the the, and I started knitting literally 24 hours a day. My daughter Lauren had sent me a, 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 a label that I could put on everything that I was knitting, and it says "Knitting Obsessed, Handmade by Susie Levan." Because <laughs> I had my knitting with me everywhere we went. If I sat in a restaurant, if I was on an airplane, if I was, uh, you know, watching TV, if I was talking to somebody, I always had my knitting with me. So she, it it actually knitting is a really zen meditative process. And in those two years, I really didn't know what was next in my life. What was, was, what was I supposed to do now with the rest of my life now that 
what I thought was my life's work had changed radically. And so I, I did start buying a million dollar plus homes in the water area, the, on the water in, in Fort Lauderdale. And like my dad, just started, you know, redoing them interiorly and, and then staging them for sale with furniture. And, and I did about 10 of them and it was very rewarding and felt good. And my dad would come with me and he would just be so proud walking around like a peacock, like saying, I showed her everything she knows. And so it made me feel good. Well, you know, if anyone has ever had the opportunity of being in the home where you are now, it is absolutely magnificent. It's just um, an, an ode to Susie because you did a fabulous job on the home where you're living. Thank you. Uh, but I have it was an ode to my. Funny. It's an ode to my dad. <laughs> well, my son, uh, my younger son, he is unbelievable when it comes to real estate, and. He has not a bit. My husband was a contractor. He started out as a carpenter. I sent him to contracting school. He became a contractor. Mm-hmm. But uh, he took my son from the time he was five on these different projects. And I mm-hmm. think that he had just absorbed it right. by osmosis. Totally. And because he certainly is not, you know, a builder himself, but he knows mm-hmm. exactly what needs to be done. He knows how to do it. And he just, uh, I mean, he has bought and sold more homes than I can even think of. But uh, just every one is a testament to absolute beauty. And, and um, I mean, he's furnished, uh, he furnished my home in Palm Desert. He furnished my home in San Diego. Uh, he just, uh, he's fabulous. He has the and talent. He, got he has that Miami. talent. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's wonderful. So uh, you never know, as parents, those of you who are listening, who are parents, so no matter what age you are, you can disseminate some wonderful information to your kids, and you don't even realize that they are, are picking it up. And for those of you that are grandparents or me, like a great-grandparent, um, you know, this is your chance. I took my, I took my uh, great-grandson and my granddaughter, <coughs> Mr. Kerwin, to the uh, mm-hmm. Now he's 10 to the National Speakers Association because I wanted him to be exposed to getting in front of people and speaking up because he's kind of shy and she's now 30. I took her when she was 10. <clears throat> He's now 10. God bless you. Thank and, you. Sorry. Uh, you know, so we have the opportunity as parents, grandparents, great-grandparents to impart unbelievable wisdom to our younger uh, siblings or younger folk because, and we don't even realize we're doing it, but it's something that, you know, certainly um, uh, it's something that, that everybody listening should be thinking about. So what's next for Susie? I mean, you're involved in so much. What are you, what's next for Susie? Well, I've been chosen, um, my book has been chosen by the Library Foundation of, of Broward as one of their literary feast authors and books. Oh, fantastic. Which is, which is April of 2020, so I'm very excited about that. Really humbled. And, um, you know, for now, I think I'm just... Uh, uh, enjoying the the moment, and um, not sure what's happening after this. You know, I'm going to continue my wisdom circle. I do. Um, I teach the passion test. I also teach people how to do um, um, how to meditate, of course. And you know, I'll continue doing all of those things, and hopefully have some more speaking opportunities. And uh, I'm working on a TEDx talk, actually. And, that uh, is a difficult thing because you've got to have it in such form in such uh, a short period of time to get the message out. But I know that you can do it, Susie. If anybody can do it, you can do it. I know that. Well, see, I'm I'm a I'm a stickler for words. So instead of saying that's difficult, what I say is, you know, it'll all work out and we'll get it done. And and uh, it should be as easy as just speaking to your friends. That's true, because, and you will be speaking to your friends because whoever is in the audience in those TEDx talks, they are pulling for you. They really want the people. They have come there to listen to the best, and so they want you to be your best. So they are all pulling for you, which is wonderful. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, okay. So, you know, I believe that the words that you put out in the universe – and I always say, be careful what you 
put out because what you put out is what you're going to get back. You know, the choices you made yesterday are the, it's what's happening in your present and the choices you make in your present is going to be your future. Absolutely. Absolutely the truth. And so, um, you know, there are so many things that happen to individuals that they don't call upon on themselves. And some people that have horrible things happen to them really believe that they have brought it on themselves, that they must have done something that called these incidents into their lives. And I don't, I don't think that's so. I, I, you know, sometimes the best people in the world have tragedies and the worst people in the world don't have anything that happens. So it is what uh, it is and what the universe gives to you. And uh, we all have our lessons. We all have our lessons. We all have our crosses to bear. We just, it's what you do with what's happened to you. That's what's most important. It's what you do with it. And that's where, you know, being resilient and, and looking at it with new eyes, fresh eyes and, and saying to yourself, okay, all right, bring it on. I can handle it. Yeah. My mom used to say all the time, you do what you have to do. And that That's right. It. And you and, do. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, I was, I'll tell you something, Susie. I was so fortunate uh, to be brought up by the parents that I had. I mean, one of the biggest compliments my son gives me is that the best thing that ever happened to him was having my husband and I as his parents. And I feel the same way about mine. Mm. You hear so many horrible stories of kids that don't get along with their parents, parents who have disowned their kids. Uh, and it's so sad. I, I know it's, it's very so sad. I have, I have friends who don't speak to their parents and, and uh, it's very sad to think that, you know, that's where they want to be. And, Everything happens for a reason, Gail, you know, and everyone has to go through their own experience and, and their own lessons. So I, I tend to realize a long time ago is that there is no judgment. Each one of whatever's going on for them is for them. Well, that's true. That is very true. And it's just, um, it's sad sometimes to watch the situation, but you realize that, okay, this is on a, on a higher power, higher level or a spiritual level, if you will is everything is happening for their higher purpose. And it may not be obvious to us from a human point of view, but from a spiritual point of view, there's a reason for why this is going on. And so without knowing the backstory, we just have to accept it for what it is. But if we get stuck in the why, 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 why is this happening? Why is this happening? And, you know, all these bad people, nothing's happening to them. You can't be stuck in that because That's everything true. happens. Everything happens for you, for your lessons, for your purpose, and for your higher growth. And if you don't learn it, you'll continue to learn it, by the way. It'll show up again for you until you learn it in one form well, or another. It's so true. And the thing that um, I want our listeners to really pay attention to is that it doesn't matter what age you are, whether you're 50 or 60 or 70 or 80 or 90. That's right. You can continue to learn. You can continue to grow. You can continue to be of value. You that's can right. continue to uh, contribute. And that's the most important thing is that you know, no matter the more, what the more on, you Right. The more you give, you have to find a purpose. You have to find a passion. You have to find something that when you wake up every morning that you feel like you've given to, to humanity, whatever it exactly. is. It might just be going to the store and smiling and making another person happy that day. Um, it, do, it doesn't have to be big, humongous things. And um, sometimes just the littlest things are the ones that are changing those around us. So I always say, like Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. That is so true. And folks, um, this wraps up our conversation with Susie LeVan. Be sure you go to Amazon or BarnesandNoble.com or anywhere else books are sold and get Getting to Forgiveness. It's something that will change your life. It will something that will open your eyes. It is a very important book for you to read. So thank you, Susie, for being with us today. We really learned a lot, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Gail, for the opportunity. Hope to see you soon. Hi. This is Dr. Gale, and I wanted you to know 
I have a whole bunch of other things to offer you. If you go to spunkyoldbroad.com, you will see an array of SOB stuff for sale and all our latest products and additions. If you're interested in getting on TV, I have a brand new course, Get on TV. And if you want to start your own business, you'll want my SOB Guide to Business Success. I know you'll love them all. I guarantee it.